All right, everybody. So I'm here, but but I don't see anybody else here. Ah, I see a student. All right. Hi, we'll Professor. Get... Sorry, would let me join in quick? Uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Don't worry. Uh oh, did I lose you? Oh no, I'm 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 looking for the question. I wrote them all down, so I don't okay. forget them. Okay. All right. So, like, one thing that's like giving me a hard time, like, understanding is like hybridization. Ah, hybridization. Okay, so you've been reading ahead a little bit about hybridization. That's good. Uh, the secret to hybridization is to count bonds. So what I'm going to do, you're seeing the screen with uh, Q&A on it and remember to do video, video yeah. off. You're seeing that. Okay. So I'm going to move this to the next page and we'll do a little hybridization discussion on the previous page. And here we go. All right. So to determine hybridization, I'm going to stand up here. Hybridization for an atom. You have to count. So I understand that there's, yeah. Okay, so you know the two things, right? Sigma bonds? There's the sigma bonds and the pi bonds, correct? Oh, don't count the pi bonds. No, we don't No, use... not pi bonds. Oh, the... Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I have it in my notes. Wait. Here we go. So these two things are what we need hybrid orbitals for. Just moving some stuff out of the way here. So we can start with a simple molecule. right there. So a little caution here is do not count pi bonds. Remember, any atom bonded to another atom has one sigma bond. That's the end of the story for sigma bonds right there. So if there's only one bond between atoms, guess what? It's a sigma bond. Now, if you've got multiple so bonds. It was double bonded. A double bond. So okay, so we do have an example of a double bonded atom. Helps if I grab the right mouse. Here we go. We have a double bond right here. The first bond is a sigma bond. The second, you cannot use a sigma twice. So the second is a pi bond. If there was a third bond, it would be a different pi bond. So remember, if you have an atom bonded to another atom, there is one sigma bond between those two atoms. If you have an atom double bonded to another atom, then one of them is a sigma bond and the other is a pi. So we have here, we'll just do this, uh, we'll do this one in red. It has a sigma. I'm talking about the carbon here. Sigma, sigma, and don't count the pi. So that atom right there has three sigmas and zero lone pairs. Three sigma 
plus zero LP. LP, and that's the short form LP is for lone pairs. Uh, so here's the or uh, here are the orbitals that an atom such as carbon have available to make bonds or to put lone pairs in. And so you always have to account for all four of those things. These are atomic orbitals. When you see an atom in a molecule, the atomic orbital story is over. That was the beginning. When atoms need to make bonds, we do hybridization and we determine the hybridization by doing the exercise we've started here. We count two things. So I count three sigmas and zero lone pairs. Uh, that'll be S, P, two. The total equals three. We have one and two Ps, three. Okay. And the same story exists for the carbon to the right, which I'll do in black. It's got a sigma there. One of these is a sigma. This is so a sigma. professor, what if up high, sorry, what and this is a sigma. So it's also SP2. Yep, question. So like is the most an atom can have would be the four, right? The SP3. Yep, SP3. Because and sadly, it, uh, my first example doesn't have one. That's easy. Just fix the first example. So it has one of those. Uh, we'll just put a C with three H's over here. So let's do that example next. We'll do that one in, let's do it in purple. It has a sigma here. So like just to make here. sure I have this right. Sigma here. Down. Sigma. Four sigma, zero LP equals four. Therefore, the symbol means therefore, SP3. You need four things in the name, SP3. And your question is now? So like the hydrogens would always be just S orbitals, correct? Because they That's can only make one bond. Because they make one bond. Very good. Uh, each hydrogen, we'll just we'll put a comment over here. Each H only has an S orbital for bonding. An S orbital because it's in the first row, right? Mm -hmm. That's all it has available. So that is what it uses to make bonds always. That is what is used to make bonds. And you can't hybridize something then, when there's only one of it, right? So it's, yeah. it's, we, it's not a hybrid in hydrogen's case. It's just an S. So yes, go ahead. And then so since carbon usually doesn't want to have any lone pairs, it's that's, safe that's carbon's nature is to not have lone pairs. So you'll always have mm -hmm. a zero when you're doing that. But I'm going to finish this example here. And you'll see when uh, when we get to the oxygen, we're going to use those lone pairs in that calculation. So I'll do the oxygen in pink next. And it has the oxygen has one of these is a sigma. The other is a pi. Don't count the pi. We have LP times two. LP times two. Each of these is a lone pair, lone pair right there, lone pair right there. Total is uh, three things. Total equals three. One sigma plus two LP equals three. Therefore, the oxygen is SP2. And the consequences of that are the angles uh, around that oxygen are going to be the sp2 angles, which you probably read ahead and you saw those are 120 degrees. And you read ahead about sp3 and the angles between the electrons are 109.5. That's a pretty big consequence of this hybridization, isn't it? And just to be mm -hmm. complete, I didn't finish the carbon here, but I'd rather take your question first before we do that carbon there. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. So for like the molecular geometry of like the atoms and their angles, yeah. do you, there's only like close, I think I want to say like 10. It's like the uh, 
for the double bond, not double bond. I'm sorry. When it's like there's two, you mm-hmm. want us only to know like the two to six, right? And like the geometry of those. Ah, uh, let's like, see. I think yeah. are you are you uh you're basing your two to six on that excellent handout from Chem One Forty One. Yeah. It, I do like that handout. I've, I've forgotten its exact nature, but uh, I like the way it was laid out. Uh, yeah, we have a lot less geometries in this course because carbon can't go beyond uh, sp3 hybridization, right? So you want to mm-hmm. you want to look at I, I believe it. It's in the lecture notes when we started talking about hybridization. Uh, and there's a summary. And uh, yeah, we can do a quick summary here. After I finish this, it's got uh, this one's got three sigmas plus zero LP SP2. And then we'll just do a quick review on uh, the geometries you'll see in this course. There's only like six of them, and two of them are actually they have the same name. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep delaying this one here. Okay, geometry summary. which stems directly from the hybridization we just talked about. So let's start start with SP. SP, we'll have, um, (laughs) they're together. I needed more room. All right, we'll start with SP and what we're gonna have here is a number of sigmas number of lone pairs and angles over here. And we'll do examples for each one. And this is all SP. So if we have a simple molecule like acetylene, in chapter seven, you'll learn that's called acetylene or ethyne. And we definitely have SP there with two sigmas. Two sigmas, zero lone pairs. And the angles there will be 180. And that's because it'd be like a linear pair, right? Yeah, we call, oh yeah, the name of the geometry. We'll put that as a new category over there. So would we not need to know those for like the exams and stuff? Oh yeah, you have to know them forever. Every exam, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. All right. We only have three angles in this course and six geometries. So it's not a daunting list. It's it's substantial, but it's a lot smaller than that one you learned back in the day. Uh, That's the end of the SP story because uh, we could have an SP molecule like carbon monoxide And it's SP, a strange Lewis structure here that has formal charges. But there's no need to describe the geometry of, of this molecule because we got atom A bonded to atom B. They're right beside each other. That's, <laughs> you could call it linear, but you're, why? <laughs> it's just A beside B, right? So we don't do geometry for uh, an atom that doesn't have at least two things off of it. Okay. Uh, so this one is uh, one sigma, one lone pair. We're pointing to this one here. This guy's going to go away forever, I think. I can come back and get him. And the angles, the angles, I guess that you could describe the angles between the lone pair and the sigma bond as 180, but there's no need to describe that as a geometry. So your SP, like the second. your angles are 180. And then we'll get into SP2, but you have a question first. So something for like the second one, that's not really going to like occur, not occur, but like that's not something that we're going to have to be looking for out for the angles for since no. it's not bonded to more than three things. More, not bonded to a more than one thing. Yeah. Like this thing's bonded to two things. I, I do need a description of the geometry of that carbon. And the description yeah. is it's got to have angles of 180, all because it's SP hybridized. And the limit geometry is called linear because that's as far as you can get two things away from yeah. each other, right? 
So if we move on to another example, such as formaldehyde, we're in the sp2 category here. Nope, oh, my molecule changed color. No biggie. Then we're talking about three sigma. That's sp2. And we have three sigmas, no lone pairs. The angles in that around that carbon are going to be 120. You have more things around that carbon than the previous carbon, so you can't move them as far apart from each other as possible, as you could here, sorry, which was 180. Uh, so 120 is the best you can do, and we call that trigonal planar. Just gonna get rid of that. And let's look at a scenario where we have two sigmas and one lone pair. Oh, need a pen for that. Two sigmas, one lone pair. The angle still be 120. Why? Hybridization's sp2. The angle's always 120 for sp2. And we need an example for that. And let's look at uh, sulfur dioxide. It's a good one. Professor? Yeah. Um, for the one that you just did, the one that you put 120. Yeah, this one here. Um, yeah. Can't you put two, two angles for it? Can I put two, sorry? Angles? Can you put two angles? Yes. What would be your other angle? You, Are you saying that? Um, 180. Oh, no, you can't do a 180 because then you don't have even spacing. Atoms want to achieve 90? even spacing. 90, definitely not. You can do better than 90. Remember, what's the name of the theory that says valence shell electron pairs repel each other? Oh, yeah, that is the name of the theory. The sepper. Uh, we want to get valence shell electron pairs as far apart from each other as possible around a central atom. That means, I think your, your sound's echoing. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, that means you won't have different angles around the same atom. They will always be the same angle around the atom. And I know you learned back in the day that, you know, with water, I'm going to erase this shortly. Yeah, you said, oh, yeah, the angle here was like less than 109.5. And the angle here was more than 109.5 because lone pairs repelled more than uh, atoms. You learned that, right? You can forget about yes. that in this yes. course. I mean, yes. don't forget that it exists, but just forget about it two reasons in this course um in this course a carbon doesn't it's not going to have lone pairs and we're always concerned about carbon right and two um we're replacing uh at, with bigger atoms than hydrogen that you discussed in water it's very often going to be a carbon and if you start pushing carbons close to each other carbons have things sticking off of them they repel each other so the angles tend to get a little more homogeneous, like the same number. All I'm trying to say from all of that, when you do sp2, one angle is appropriate and one angle only, it's called 120. When you do sp hybridization, one angle is appropriate, only one angle, 180. And this one here has sigma sigma lone pair. So we're back to sulfur dioxide here. It's in this category two sigmas, one lone pair, and that's going to be sp2. Uh, the angles will still be 120, and you can't call the geometry trigonal planar anymore because when we describe the angles, the lone pair, it's, it's invisible in the geometry. That doesn't mean it's not there. It, it, causes geometry by pushing those oxygens away and we describe this geometry here i'm just going to copy this molecule you don't describe lone pairs in the corners you only describe atoms in the corners and you describe this geometry in red right here and what would you have to describe that when it's just like that we call that bent Notice I didn't, I didn't go out here. I'm going to erase this in a second. I didn't go out there because there's a lone pair out there. We don't describe that. 
So we call it bent. So we're up to three geometries, aren't we? And continuing, got to get to six. Maybe I miscounted and it's only five. We'll see. So how many scenarios exist for SP3 is the question here. Well, we can have four sigmas, zero lone pairs, three sigmas, one lone pair, two sigmas, probably have to space these out better. Three, one, and two, two. And we'll just start with, uh, say, carbon tetrachloride here. Lest you think all examples have to have hydrogen in them. And remember, chlorine's nature is to have three lone pairs and one sigma bond. And yeah, review the nature of the atoms in those lecture videos that you see, because you have to know those forever too. That is very typical for chlorine's bonding right there. So four sigmas, zero lone pairs. Your angle can't be as big as 120 when you're separating four things. Your angle is now down to 109.5. And the geometry is named after this figure right here, where your central atom looks like this. Those are at 109.5 and it's not flat anymore. This bond is called a wedge. Some of you have read about that already. And this one's called a dash, but all the angles around, I don't want an H there. All the angles around this are 109.5. And the name of that, as most of you know, is tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. Okay. So there's that first scenario and that carbon would be tetrahedral. And let's go to another example. Let's use this very uh, interesting molecule NF3. If memory serves me, that one is a very reactive molecule might even be explosive upon contact. But anyway, what do we have? We have three sigma bonds, sigma number one, sigma number two, sigma number three, and one lone pair. So we're talking about the nitrogen in the middle here. Don't forget that. And the angles. Well, if you're SP3, what are your angles? 109.5. Now, just look at the uh, figure that I drew in black for this one. And remember, you're just replacing one of these corners with a lone pair and then ignoring it. The position of the other three bonds stays the same. Uh, this is like, like in your mind, make that disappear. Now describe the geometry when you connect the outsides here. The tetrahedral name from the first example derives from, and I'm a terrible artist, I'm going to do my best. I don't even want to ruin the diagram. Let me copy it. I'm getting too much. There we go. When they describe the geometry, it's they're describing what this would look like as a geometric figure. Triangle number one in red. It's going to get kind of gruesome here. Triangle number two in blue. Triangle number three in green. And where's the triangle I'm missing? The, the back side has a triangle and that one's going to be in uh, pink. There are four triangles there and you can't see that anymore because I totally devastated this page with that. But that's where its name comes from. Four hedra, uh, four, four faced figure centered on a central hedra. And that's why it got its name. But you don't have to know that. Just know the angles, know basically how to draw the bonds, and then know how to draw this one. I'm trying to copy the one from above, but there's a lone pair on top this time. So you're describing another four triangle object with a big base. So that'd be the blue one. 
Uh, and then the, the pink one only goes here this time. And the uh, red one only goes here. It's shallower. It doesn't go as high, right? And they call that a pyramid. Pyramidal. And this is a familiar word for our, you, I hope, from your inorganic one days. And that's a pyramid. And then we'll look at another molecule, uh, oxygen. We'll even do ozone. Why not? Ozone. Ozone's not a very happy molecule. It's an important molecule. And I see it has two sigma bonds. And notice it doesn't have two lone pairs. Is that a bad example then? Hmm. Yeah, bad example. Yeah, it's not sp3, it's sp2. It would fit, it would be the same example as this one. Recall that oxygen is in the same column of the periodic table as sulfur. So whatever diagram you do for that will fit down here. Keeping in mind though that oxygen cannot go beyond the octet rule. Better example for here would be, let's go. Waters. Water is a nice example. Two sigmas, two lone pairs. There we go. SP3. What's your angle? I know you learned it's less than 109.5, but for this course, I'm going to cover myself. I'm still going to use the same number because I want you to always use that number for SP3. Everything here is SP3. So you wouldn't want us to mark this as like less than one. No, don't even bother. You can do that. I'll put a happy face on your test and, but you don't get any extra points for it. Okay. So I'll draw, I'll draw this version of it. That way you don't have to worry about wedges and dashes, but those two lone pairs over here, one would be on this wedge and the other would be on this dash and they push those H's over here and there's your angle. Uh, and we described the geometry as we did before in red here. You're describing only this. Hmm, okay, my pen went to sleep. And I think we already have a drawing of that. That's here, right? It's bent. But this time, what's the only difference between that bent and the one above? Well, the angle, right? This is closer to 109.5. And that's closer to 120. And what do we have? We have a linear trigonal planar, a bent, that's three. Tetrahedral pyramidal bent number two, that's six. And that's a summary of all the geometries that you will be responsible for in organic chemistry one. That's good. You know what? We're going to come back. This was this is a nice little video segment that lasted uh, quite a bit of time, but still useful information. And I, I don't want these videos to get huge with multiple topics in them if I can avoid that. So I'll be back. It takes it's going to take about 10 minutes to render this into a video before I can start again. Same link. They just don't even bother going away. And I'll just I think I just pop up again for you and uh, have more questions ready. And if you don't have more questions ready, no big deal. I'm still coming back to do that question I kept erasing. All right, so I'll see you all very soon. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, any quick You just questions? want us to wait. Yeah, just hang in there. <laughs>